special edition of Six Pack Cinema. Welcome. We're going to talk about Stranger Things. Kick into the intro, Jimmy. Dude, you should review movies. Oh my god, yes. Okay, I've okay. had a couple, so. Uh, movie review. All right, guys, welcome to the midweek edition of Six Pack Cinema. Guys, how you doing? Good. Pretty good. Been waiting, waiting for you guys to finish the series so we could record. Yeah. Well, I don't like, I don't like sitting down and watching it nine hours in a row like you do, because then your brain has no chance to catch up with your thoughts. You need to well, that's true. I it every now and then. had a headache for like a day and a half after I binged this. Yeah. So you did, you did it wrong. We did it right. Well, binging is such a strange thing, and I think I binged this in two sessions, but it's so weird because. There's shows like, what are the, like, uh, Breaking Bad was like this, Game of Thrones is like this, The Leftovers on HBO is the biggest one, or Westworld, where you want to, like, dive in really deep and find all those Easter eggs and, like, all the extra effort, and you have a week to read what other people have found and all that shit, but when you binge it, I don't even, like, I I fear not finishing it in one or two sessions, because then it'll be spoiled for me. I love reading, like, things. It gets out there too quickly. But I think I did this in two sessions, yeah. which I think, and I think how you watch this really changes if that seventh episode, and I don't know if we need to dive in this right away, but if you liked that one-off episode or not, because I, I didn't mind it, but I've had three people tell me they hated it. I, we can get into it in a little bit. That's when she's in Chicago. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have opinions on that one. <laughs> yeah. Same here. But uh, why don't, why don't we start with our uh, snap impressions then? Just. Quick one, two sentences. Jimmy, what about you? I loved it. I thought, I think I, I'm not going to say season two was better than the first season, but I can, will say I enjoyed it personally a lot more. I, which I didn't, actually, I didn't think they were going to fail, but um, I kind of like, as soon as it started, I texted you guys, the eighties and nostalgia, the way they perfect this, the tone of this show is so amazing which carries through all the sci-fi because I don't really like sci-fi. So I loved it. I thought I enjoyed it more than season one, for sure. Okay. All right. Shane, I, what about you? I, I loved it as well. Um, I don't I don't get why people are all over the internet saying that it's better or worse than season one. It's, it's this one. It seemed like a very seamless transition from between the two seasons. It was just a continuation of it. I would, um, I would, I would agree with that. What? I agree with that completely. Yeah, no. So I, I don't, I don't think it was, I don't think it was better than or worse than. It was great, um, and it was, it's everything that you should get in it out of a Netflix series. It's just, I, I loved how they didn't do the thirteen episodes. I love how they cut it down to nine. They kept it, kept it kind of compact. It dragged maybe one episode. It, uh, I can get into a lot of details later on, but yeah, overall thumbs up from John. Nice. Yeah, I, I liked it too. I think I enjoyed the first season a little bit more because that was more horror focused and this was a little bit more actiony, I felt like. And the best way in my head I could like uh, the best metaphor I could think of was that this was the Terminator 2 to season 1 as the first Terminator where that was a horror movie and then the second one was a little bit more actiony or not Terminator, sorry, uh fucking Alien to Aliens is what I was thinking uh earlier. Where the first one was very horror esque, and then it got a little bit less, which I think that was the same thing here. It was it changed enough that it wasn't the exact same thing over and over again, but it kept the things I loved about the original. If that makes sense. It does make sense. Good job, Dave. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we all liked it. Yeah, right. we all liked it. Yeah. Well, thumbs up. Nice. All right. I think, I think that's to, that's. Um... Oh, what were you saying, Shin? Oh, I'm saying that that's a. That seems to be the common consensus among the internet and the world. I don't think I have ever oh, heard one person say it was a bad series. Yeah, I've only had one rare. person tell me it's that rare. they were let down by it, and I want I'm cutting him out of my life. So, good call. The only way you yeah. the right. only way you can not like Stranger Things like one or two is if you really really hate sci fi, and I am in that bunch. Like I really hate science fiction, especially like this deep into this shit. But 
I really like good filmmaking and like the way they are able to carry the nostalgia, the tone of the kids, like the youthfulness, the eighties, everything they do besides like the science fiction storyline is so well done that even me and I, who I would never, ever, like if you told me the plot of this, I'd be like, I'm out. I don't care. But it's so well, but like my sister, she doesn't enjoy filmmaking as much. She would be, she would not enjoy the show. She would just think it's so stupid and dumb because my family's not a big sci-fi family. That's the only way I think you can not like Stranger Things. But if you like any of those, it's so good. It's so well made. Yeah, I, I think you I think you still get around it just because there's so much more different aspects to it. I mean, the science fiction, it's more, I wouldn't even say it's science fiction. I think it's more uh, mythological. If you yeah, it's, it's more... Yeah, whatever it's, it is. It's Dungeons and Dragons. It's very it's Stephen King horror-esque. Where, like, science is a part of it, but it's not It's not like sci-fi or anything. Well, yeah. sci-fi. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a weird category to put it into, but whatever. We can move on from that. It's we don't know. It was good. We like we liked it. Whatever this this category was, it was strange and I liked it. Yeah, was it stranger? Just, huh? It was it was strangest. <laughs> I, I wanted to touch upon what Jimmy said. How uh, we already discussed it before. How the first episode opens up with a ton of nostalgia. And how it just hits you, like the, the Ghostbusters, Thriller, uh, the cars, and just everything about it was awesome. The arcade, the soundtrack. Uh, the arcade. Oh, my God. So, it's, it started, the, the series started off with all that nostalgia, and I think they really needed, needed to do that because it kicked you right back into the, the mood that you left off at in Season 1. They, they were heavy in nostalgia the first one, and they tapered off entirely after, like, by Episode 6. It wasn't really hitting mm-hmm. any of those major like throwbacks anymore. They just kind of did it, hit you, hit you hard with it right off the bat to get you in the mood, and you coasted from there. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, that was one of my notes too. That the the nostalgia, while it was huge in the beginning, like you said, it it kind of fades out and it just focuses on this story, which which was nice. I felt like the first season was just the greatest hits of the eighties a little bit. Jimmy. Any points there? I I started that. <laughs> he was building off. Oh, well. He was building off my point. The nostalgia is awesome. The eighty scene and that entrance with Rocky like a hurricane was like great. Mm. I mean, it's even cheesy, but it's still so well made. And the character of Max, like they're cheese, like this is a badass intro. Not as badass as, as L when she came in at the very end, but like right away, okay, these kids yeah. are from California and they're like wild. <laughs> As well. as really yeah, but I mean, when he rolled up in, in this Camaro, blaring the song and whipping through the parking lot, being a dickhead, I felt like, oh, here comes the biggest douche on the planet. And all the other kids in high school in the, in the show were like, oh, my God, he's so hot. Like, has that ever, like, really worked or is that just a movie thing? Because if, if I rolled in my high school like that, I'd be such a douchebag. Uh, but my- I think I, I feel like that was on point, though. Like, kids that age are douchebags. Yeah, my, yeah, but everyone loved him. That would have been the cool kid at my high school. Or like, it wouldn't have been like yeah. frowned upon. It would have been. I used to. Uh, I mean, I didn't like blare music or or ride around like crazy. But there'd be a long ass line to get out of the high school parking lot, and I'd just drive over every single. The things that stop you in parking spots. What are those called? I don't know. Does have a name? The curbs. 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 Yeah, but they're not really curbs. Or curbs. Whatever. I would just yeah. I, was, I know. I would just drive over those like with reckless abandon, as if they weren't there in my Ford Explorer, and get out and skip the entire line. And you would probably think that here goes the biggest douchebag in the world. But I got out of there ten minutes faster than everyone else, so it was cool. There you, there you <laughs> go. Cool guy Jimmy rolling through the parking lot as Explorer. He's kicking the shit out of his Ford Explorer. So you mentioned it briefly, uh, Shane. But what did you guys think about the new characters overall this season? The new characters? Yeah. Yeah, the new characters. Sorry. You, you, Billy was cool. Okay, I sorry, mean, you broke up. They needed, since they turned Steve into the good guy last year, they needed a, a new bad guy. He was... And he was such such an 80s bad guy, too. I loved he, it. Yeah. It was so perfect. The fact that he wore Zapka's outfit at uh, the Halloween party. I love that. It was like, in case you didn't realize this guy's going to be a douchebag the whole season, let's just... Go full on zero subtext. Um, yeah, so he was yeah. awesome. Max was awesome. Like, I thought she was really well done. And who else was new? 
Elle's sister. Bob. Who cares about that? Oh, Bob was great. That was like just another like sense of innocence thrown into this already. Whole the whole show is basically like this innocent town and these innocent kids yeah, and- getting their minds like blown with the worst evil imaginable. And then you take this Bob who's like, even more innocent than any of them, throw him into the mix is kind of per- perfect. Yeah. yeah. And it was the, awesome the- how he, he, he was the guy who, who actually solved everything. Yeah. He was, he was the quiet mastermind behind solving the whole deal. And he was also the guy, the one guy who died. I think I, I loved how they did that. Cause they, they start off with Bob. He's the awkward, like stepfather figure. He's he's corny. He's cheesy. He's not really. He's he's likable, but not really likable. He's like you didn't hate him. Uh, but then he goes ahead and he makes this this terrible, terrible advice to to Will. Say, hey, let that monster eat you, and, and and just stand up to him. And that in reality, he didn't he didn't know what he was saying. But in reality, he was saying, I was yeah, say, yeah. yourself up to the, it, this guy. But in, so in his head, Will was just having nightmares, like. From his yeah. point of view, the, the advice was very good advice. So, but I think without that moment, like with him trying to like really connect with Will, him dying had a lot less significance because without that, like he was just a character who was banging Will's mom. He was a dopey <laughs> guy, but it, it, that that one scene was very important and made him very very real, and just enough to make you care about his death, but not enough to make you sad. I guess. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, the one thing I'll say I disagree with that Jimmy said is I I started out the season, I really liked Max, but by the end of it, I thought she was just kind of there and not that great. I'm hoping they expand on her character in the next season and she gets a little bit more better interactions with the group because I was really interested when she first started out at the arcade and all that and she's Mad Max, but by the end of it, I I didn't care. She was just another body and had zero worry if she died or not. Yeah, I mean, by the end, there's a lot more to worry about than any of the characters. Like, I don't care about Billy hooking up with Nancy, Nancy's mom either. But it, I mean, things. That, I think that, we all that, cared about that. No, Ooh, it, I don't know. I, she I was like great. That. I mean, I was, uh, she was, was a foil for like politics. the group dynamic, which you needed to have. They couldn't. They needed something to split them up. Yeah, but I, I'd like her to be more than just a plot device to split them up. Oh, well, I mean, like she's a side character. You can't be asking for too much. Yeah. But she was a zoomer. She she drove him to the uh, <laughs> the cornfield or whatever. That was that was that was her two main her, her two major contributions. She she put a wedge between Lucas and uh, Dustin, uh, and they resolved that instead of being a love triangle. So that was good on them. And then she mm-hmm. drove them to the the pumpkin field. Good for her. And that's really all she did. Yeah, she's got a lot all of potential right. though for season three. She was she's badass. Oh, for sure. Yeah, she was. She brought a little bit of bad boy to the to the group. Yeah, she's definitely much more of a badass than any of the other kids, besides Dustin by the end, because he's learning from the best, Steve. Yeah, that was good yeah, badass crying at the bleachers. Huh, that was That's, rough. It was heartbreaking. I I, I, heart. I I teared up at that point. I just I saw uh, him crying and I was like, oh fuck, Dustin. It genuinely hurt my heart. Yeah. got me real good. I was like, God, oh, that poor bastard. Okay, while we're on that, the end dance for a second, that's where the little detail I noticed that your little details that guy, Sheehan, the blue ribbon that Hopper wears all through the first season and this season that was from his dead daughter, he gave to Elle, and she was wearing it that dance. Uh, Did not notice that. Yeah, that, that was a nice little uh, a little detail I noticed, and I, I made a note of it just to rub it in your face that I noticed it. So good, bravo, good job, that's a good, good spotting that's that. That's a good catch. It is my catch uh, from that that last scene um, bothered me. It was it was so it, everything was so well done as far as context with the with the time period, but the last Hopper's last line was about the teacher who retired in the seventies. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh yeah, he's gone. He retired in the seventies, I think. That's something you would say now, not if it was nineteen eighty four. Why do you think they wouldn't say that in nineteen eighty four? Well, he's saying like we we because was a guy he, re- he re- we wouldn't say he retired a few years ago. Yeah, he's like, oh, he he retired a few years ago. No, he retired in the seventies. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know what Sorry. to call like the two thousands. Do we call them the two thousands? You just said it. The two thousands. The, 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 the aughts, aughts or whatever, or yeah. the teens, or something like that. 
Yeah, I don't know. But I, I feel but we're in the teens. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're just in a weird time where nobody calls them that. Anyways, they say the year. Yeah. They try to specify. I say the early two thousands, like like early two thousands punk rock is like how I would say that, not like aught rock. Yeah. Fair. Aught rock. Okay. Is <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, All what right. else? What are some of your guys' other favorites you liked from the season? I like that. Can I can I go into my Ghostbusters? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Can I go my, my Ghostbuster theory? That was very intentional on who was what. Remember how they had the big fight over or the big argument over who had to be Winston, the black kid or the the not black kid? Okay. What about it? It was it, well. It was it was kind of funny at first, and it was like, oh well, he didn't want to say that he had to be Winston because he was a black guy, but that's what he was thinking. But in real, like if you if you look at the the characters story through the season they played into that character very 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 well dustin is ray stance ray stance is a blumbering idiot somebody who would harbor a fucking alien <laughs> just because he thought he was a nice pet uh egon really close to supernatural like uh professor shit so it makes a lot of sense he'd be possessed by the uh by the uh flame monger thing mind flare um, mind flare and uh Venkman, being lucas Venkman gets the girl at the end. Lucas got the girl at the end. And Mike, being Winston, was completely fucking irrelevant. It played, <laughs> Except it played Mike also perfectly. got the girl at the end, and he got the main girl. Got ah, freak. he got the fake girl. She's not a real thing. Yeah, she's... she's. Yeah, Mike sucked. They said on, like, on set they called him Emo Mike because he, he just had to walk around and be all emo and boring and shit. That sucks for that he's actor. He's a bitch boy. Like, that actor, like, okay, what's my role yeah. going to be in season two? Oh, you're going to be a pouty little bitch. You barely have any lines, and no one gives a shit about you. Okay, cool. Although, as much as I hated his character, not hated, but didn't like his character as much this season, I was happy they did it to him because it gave us t- more time with Lucas and Dustin. And I actually yeah. care about them now. They were just little side characters last time, and now I feel like they're main characters. And, and we got enough of Mike in the last season. I had way too much Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they really flushed out like about, Lucas and Dustin. We got to see their home lives. We got to see their- which was all very, very good. Um, but how about Will? Let's talk about hitting the jackpot by these Duffer brothers, whoever whoever cast Will, because the first season he was nothing. He was around fifteen minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, fast forward to this season where he's actually going to play a role. The dude was the best of all of them. He was the best actor. Oh, for yeah. sure. Near the end when I he's being. He- when he's going through his whole exorcism thing, I I was shocked because you don't normally see kids that good at acting. Yeah, I mean, you, you can debate if he was the best or not, but like he he was cast last year to be a nobody. He was just like a very minor actor, even though it was all like revolving around him. You know, like the, the main character in The Hangover wasn't even in it. That's what it was like. So having him be an actual forefront character and being able to do what he did, lucky. Yeah, for Very sure. Lucky. Sorry, especially Jimmy, for child actors. What were you saying? We I feel like we cut you off a bunch there. No, it wasn't anything. Point. He's the youngest. He's it was only ten when he auditioned. He's like four years younger. He looks tiny and younger than them, uh, which is like part of his character. But yeah, pretty impressive. I mean, these kids are awesome. They're like all very good actors, but I can't like Lucas and uh, Lucas and Dustin are the stars. And Millie Bobby Brown is going to be like a huge star. I don't know. She's going to go on to be like uh, an actual yes. movie star when she grows up and shit. Well, I think Finn is too, just because he was also in It and he was amazing in It. And it was nothing like his character in Mike. So I think that should Wait, be Mike, a range of time. Mike was in It? Yeah, he's one of the main characters in It. Really? Yeah. Mm. I was going to say he's too ugly to be a star. Yeah, I, No, he yeah. is... He's great, yeah. and his, his name's Finn Wolfhard, which is the most badass name in the planet. I disagree. Well, I think it sounds like a pussy. That's a hard disagree. Finn, badass name? You're an idiot. Yes. Finn Wolfhard? No. You, you say his whole name. You don't just say Finn. Finn Wolfhard sounds like a complete wimp. No. Sounds, you guys have horrible you, taste. And it's unanimous name. across the internet that everyone loves his name, and he has a badass name. Mm, disagree. Finn but, Huxtable Winifred. Uh, uh, I gotta tell you something. I don't like Mike, and not the not the character, the actor. I don't know why. I just don't like that kid. I was watching, you know, the after show, like face. talking for Stranger Things. What what do they call the after show? Stranger. I think it's talking. Oh, I, 
I, I thought it was talking Stranger Things. I have no idea. I have no idea. Whatever. Mike, Mike sucked. I didn't like him. Gave me gave me a bad vibe. That kid's going to grow up to be a jerk. <laughs> yep. He's got a dumb there. face. He's not going to go anywhere, and he's just a whiny little bitch. My friend was telling me that him and uh, Millie Bobby Brown are going to date in real life. I was like, no way <laughs> would she date him. He's got a loserish name, like Finn Wolf Dick or something. No, everyone. No, I remember, loves they were his on name. like the the Tonight Show. They were on the Tonight Show after after season one, and they brought up the kiss. And Mike was like, "Yeah, that was cool." And Millie was like, "Oh no, that was bad. That was horrible." <laughs> because she I actually because he's a fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they were also like eleven when they filmed that, and she was probably like, "Boys are icky." No, she is. She is much more mature than both of them. He he knew what he. He knew he, he snuck one past everyone. Because she's going to be the Hermione Granger of Harry Potter, and she, and she knows it. I like this season to just All completely right. change out of bashing little kids. <laughs> I, liked, uh, <laughs> I, I liked this season because I knew, like, the science fiction. So, season one, it was a lot of questions where it was like, what is this? Like, what is going to be the resolution? Am I going to hate it? Where Where is this going? And I was on edge. Where season two, I already knew it was this underworld, upside down, demigod, whatever. I knew all that weird shit was around the corner. So I feel like I had a better grasp. So if you were to say they're that, like, not to compare them, just say they're one fluid line of same quality show, it would make sense that I like it the more I got into it because I just understood everything better. And the, the upside down, like actually digging the tunnels and going down there was pretty cool. I don't know. I thought it was like, in my head, it was like, okay, I totally get this now. I understand the problem and the situation. We got to close that fucking gate. Season one, I was a bit confused the entire time. Yep. That's fair. I um, I, I do want to say I like the tunnels, but I hated the whole map thing. The whole map thing across the whole house felt like, oh, everyone really liked the Christmas lights in season one. We have to do something like that again. I wish they had come up with a better way for that. Yeah, but I'm not and mad about them. Up- John a map or no? If they, I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was for sure. It was for sure trying to to play off of the 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 string of lights and stuff, but it was okay. Yeah, I I mean, there's no chance in hell they could piece together that puzzle from this kid's scribbles. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I mean, they all connected. I'm I'm trying to like find some things I didn't like just because I loved it so much. Trying to okay. No, right, for sure. That's that's uh, half of the merit point. Yeah, no, I I mean, I'm season three. I bet there is. A similar plot point again because it'll just be the theme kind of and it's kind of cheap but if they figure out a cool way to present that like they have to solve some weird ass <laughs> problem the christmas lights was amazing <clears throat> with the letters yeah and everything. That- this wasn't as good as the christmas lights but i still thought it was crazy and just like when um bob walks in and he's looking around like, holy shit. And then he goes from asking <laughs> questions to figuring out. That was a great little scene right there. So I thought everything that, every, like the creation of it was kind of corny. It was like, I agree. It's like, yeah, let's do something like that again. But then the execution was wonderful. It was perfect. So I'm not mad at it. Fair. I'll, I'll, be, a, I'll be a little bit, uh, I'll be a little more upset if they do the same thing in season two, though. Sorry, what were you saying, Shane? So yeah, you just brought up the uh, that scene of Bob figuring it out when he when he rolls up in his little little car pulling out the brain teeth or th- the talking how it helped made him feel better. I was like, okay, well that's just <laughs> what a what a loser. But then it, it all worked together because the brain teeth or th- was what really helped him. it helped him figure out the whole thing. So he he actually did end up going there and play with his brain yep. teeth. Or th- <laughs> there was gap. There was I hated his lisp. His stupid lisp pissed me off. <laughs> I did love too the the little Goonies reference there too, and he's like, "Oh, what's at the X? Is it buried treasure? Buried pirate treasure? Yeah, that's good." There was so many references like that, so many references. Awesome. Did you guys watch the after show? I have not yet. I'm not. Oh, that's awesome! I'm, ex- I plan on it. I um, I just wanted to record this first. They explain so many things, like the video games they play. Dig Dug is a tunnel game. And that and then later on they're digging tunnels they have to find the way there's so many little things that uh they kind of explain and even the actors are sitting there like whoa that's what that was that makes sense 
and like the, all the trees were covered in that gook, and like when Hopper was like pulling it off, and he was doing like the the uh, getting off his hand, that was identical to Bill Murray in uh, Ghostbusters, oh, really? getting all that that slime shit off of him. Yep. Oh. I, I think that's heavy just, Ghostbusters vibe. I think that's just what you do if you have slime on your hand. I don't think that was. Well, I mean, they were dressed up as life. they were dressed up as Ghostbusters, Dave. I'm trying to make a good connection. <laughs> okay. No, fuck your connection. That's just what you do if Ghostbusters you have slime on great. your hand. Want to go into what we change? Would you change anything? Man, it's tough because it's such a crazy world that I like. So it's a complicated thing. So I don't know what I'd change. Um... The one-off episode, I know everyone hated it, so maybe tone it down. Like, I don't know if everyone hated it. I didn't hate it because I watched them, like, so that was the seventh episode. I watched, like, six, seven, eight, nine. Like, I watched that in one sitting. So I was never, yep. like, oh, this one episode is just all this shit. I was just watching. Like, it just kept going. But my friends, yep. they stopped after the sixth, which is right when the demi demi dogs whatever we're calling them get out of the hole like get out of the gate and come so they're like oh the next episode's gonna be so good and they stopped and they had to do stuff and then they came back to episode seven and there was a full episode of nothing about hawkins so i could understand why you wouldn't like it if that's yeah. how you watched it i didn't watch it like that so well no I, I i was talking about it with someone else earlier this week and i think the best way to solve that because i didn't mind the episode as a standalone episode I think what you do is you switch six and seven, the order of it, so that you get that 11 episode, and when she has her little psychic visions of what's going on in Hawkins, you see crazy shit going down, but you have no idea what, what it is, because you just see Hopper and Mike, and you don't see who they're interacting or why they're freaking out or anything. So in your head, you're like, oh shit, stuff's go- like things are going down in Hawkins, and then the next episode starts, and it hasn't reached there yet, and everything's still fine. So you don't know, like, and it starts building towards it. I think if they switched those two episodes, it would have been a better viewing experience. I agree. I dis- I disagree. Well, yeah. I disagree. <laughs> Jimmy, you give you give your filmmaker's point first, because I may not uh, make sense. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, like, as when you got them hooked, don't give them what they want right away. It's like, that's why cliffhangers exist for a reason. So if you have to get the storyline in, Put it where they know at the end they're going to get the really good stuff, so they'll they'll sit through it. That's what well, I think. But they also know with Stranger Things, nobody's not going to sit through it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I li- I liked all the background See, though. I was I was thinking originally maybe they like split it in half and like and go back and forth between six and seven, like kind of like mash those up a little bit, so you get a little Hawkins in there. But the more I think about it, the more I think you know what. Fuck everyone. This is the writer's choice, and he, I think he did a pretty good yeah. job at it. It was it, you don't have to have the full blown action every time. He, he calmed the, he calmed you down, gave you a little a different story, a little palate cleanser, and then ramped it up for eight and nine. Well, it was two very intense episodes. So I think what he did, you know what, being professional, he may have made the right call. Eh, I disagree. Yeah, I, I, I well, I didn't even have a problem with it until. Other people told me they had. And I was like, oh, I can see how from the way you watched it, that kind of sucks. But how I watched it, yeah. I didn't I didn't even notice. Because the way that they did it, sometimes the titles came in like 10 minutes into the episode. And I'm like, oh, wait, this is a new episode? I had no idea where I was because I just kept going and going and going. Which, how you been? How yeah, you that, been that happened to me a couple times. I, I kept forgetting when episodes would end and start. Exactly. The only, t- only reason I even knew for these two is because of the it ended with the demi dogs coming up, and I was really pumped. And then the next episode started, and I was like, eventually they're going to go back to Hawkins. And then I was like, forty minutes into the episode, and I was like, well, fuck, I guess there's no Hawkins this episode. Yeah, yeah. So, well, but I mean, let's not dis- let's not discredit how <laughs> awesome just just because it was different. It was an awesome episode. I mean, L is 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 literally kicking ass, and her sister, mm-hmm. uh, her. Her superpower sucks. What what about her sucks? If if I'm being honest, I think her eight I think her superpower it's in comparison to L's, it sucks because L actually can do something. Eight, she's making you think something is different. So I mean her it's very, very useful. I, I get that, but if you're comparing the two, woo, L eleven is so much better. I think an improved model. That's why she's uh number eleven. Yeah. Hey, One thing I did like sense. about the episode. One thing I did like about the episode, too, is that 
it really reminded me of a bunch of the old sitcoms when they would have backdoor pilots to other TV shows. That's what this felt like. Like, now we're going to get the Stranger Things spinoff of this gang in Chicago just robbing stuff and killing people. Yeah, it also, it really yeah. opens up I season see that. three to have all these people. Like, there, we got eight and eleven or whatever. We got, there's got to be a seven. There's got to be five out there with all these weird powers, and they're probably ganged Se- up. Seven. And Brenner is definitely seven coming is back. A, uh, yeah. I, th- I think 007 is a, is already been made, so they'll probably uh, stay away from that one. <laughs> Um, I that liked, kid died. Did you like Paul Paul Reiser? Uh, was he actually good? Yes, I liked him. I thought he was great because he's like that really nice, but also kind of creepy, but very nice like way of talking that Paul Reiser has. But do you think he was he was yeah. actually not that evil? Because I kind of yeah no that was my favorite. I, think, twist I, I don't of, think he was. I think that was my favorite twist of the whole season because the entire season I kept expecting him to betray them, and at the end he didn't, and he protected them as best he could and he got eleven to be a legal guard or her legal guardian to be Hopper. Yeah. And, you know, it kinda sucked at the end because he got shut down. He was trying to do the right thing the whole time. He was trying to and he wouldn't he wouldn't uh flame up the uh the, the gate to try to close it because it was hurting this one boy. He was actually like trying he, he was actively not helping the world by helping this one kid. So that's yeah pretty good I on thought- him. And at the end, he gets he gets shut down because of that asshole uh, uh, detective guy, and and the two kids. It, Wait, they, yeah, they, can they, we they can we talk about this, this whole situation? Subplot because I hate Nancy and John together, and it's not just because I'm in love with Nancy. Like I hate that whole fucking yeah. story of them getting together. Because if you remember season one, yeah, she, he took pictures of her naked in a bed, like through a bedroom window. Who dates that guy? Yeah, and he's ugly too. She's she's much love prettier than he is. Although also on Saturday and he got he got deported for uh trying to smuggle cocaine into the country too. So next season we might be getting Steve and Nancy back together. <laughs> John is a whiny little bitch, but I like that storyline and I liked Oh, there goes the back of my chair. I liked the actor that played the cra- the crazy Wait. Dude. Did you did you just call me a whiny little bitch? No. No, he said John, not you. He said she John. Didn't. The character's name is Jonathan. Who's John? Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> I was like, isn't his name like, John? Wait a minute. Yes. It's his Jonathan. Name is, his name is Joe in real life, I think. But, uh... No, Joe is Steve. Oh, okay. Confusing. Anyway, I like that subplot. And, uh... But... What, start, what we started, the Paul Reiser actually being good. I loved that. I was like, that is... Like, this dude just inherited this big-ass problem, which is a huge problem. And he's actually trying to fix it learn from it and not let like other nations know about it. And then like, uh, that was really cool kink in the whole thing where it's not just like inherently evil anymore. We actually have a dude. He's got to do some shit evil, but why would Nancy and Jonathan know that? Like, you know, why would the last people were so mean? Why would they? So I don't blame them for getting him in trouble because. Oh, of course not. No, but it's just, they, they didn't know. And so their 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 ignorance really kind of like threw a monkey wrench into things at the end because the good guys lost their jobs. I think Jonathan should have oh, Jonathan should have anyway, known so. a little bit because what fucking Will has been going to these therapy sessions there since for the whole year. He should know that they're trying to help Will. Uh, no, but no, they he what they it wasn't really clear at that point. They were just monitoring. They, they were studying. Yeah, even Will was, like him. they were still skeptical of what was going on there. Yeah, but also, I think we all just kill, well, yeah. kill Will. Like that was so silly to me. He 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 really there's deserved a lot to die. at stake, and you're there's he was a lot already at gone. stake, and like this one kid, you're gonna like there's so much at stake. I think. Yeah, no. When when the doctor said that the conference world. room, and they're like, "Well, who cares if one kid dies? We need to do this." I was on those guys' side. Yeah, it made a lot more sense. Yeah, I was like, they make it a lot of sense. Yeah, it's like yeah, make a lot him. of sense. We've hardly even seen him. He's only really been in this season. He wasn't re- really in season one. I don't care if he dies. Yeah, good, 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 good better yeah, for there's world. nowhere to go but down for him as an actor, so. Yeah. Mm. Um, has there, besides Jamie Lannister, has there ever been such a character progression like Steve's? Start of season one, everyone was thinking, mm. this guy doesn't deserve Nancy, and now everyone's like, 
Nancy doesn't deserve Steve. He's the he's the hero of the whole show, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no. If if we're going to go over winners losers, he is a big big winner in this this uh, this season. He oh, the yeah. way he fought um, that boy Billy. Yeah, you got a couple good. Like, I love I love I love Dustin when he was like hovering over this mangled face of Jonathan or uh, of Steve. Yeah. And he was like, but you yeah, got a yeah. good couple of licks in. You got a, you. It wasn't a total loss. Like, yeah, dude. And dude, to be lost. fair, no, he was winning until Billy grabbed that plate and hit him across the face with a plate. Which actually hurt him. They only Billy. did one take of that because he actually hit him wrong and it hurt him. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, rough. Oh, well, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, Billy was never it was never going to lose that fight. If you thought otherwise, you're you're, you're lying to yourself. But I, I really wanted Steve to win it though, just because he got his ass kicked in season one. He of got course. his ass kicked this season. Next season, he needs to get into a regular fist fight and win. Yeah, I will say when he, when he came to in the car, that might have been the funniest, the second funniest moment in the whole series. Oh yeah, when he's freaking out because uh, Mad Max is driving. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was cracking up there. Mm-hmm. My 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 funniest moment was Dustin going to Mike's house and talking to his dad, and he just walked away. He's like, "You are root- useless, son of a bitch." Is <laughs> <laughs> what everyone was thinking. Mike's dad is completely yeah. useless. Oh, for sure. Dustin, Dustin, just running around saying, "Son of a bitch, son of a bitch." I could listen to that for a whole episode. Just cracks me up. He was great. Yeah, seriously, I want a spinoff of just Dustin and Steve going on random hijinks. I'd watch that show. <laughs> yeah, we sponsored by they the uh, the Big Brother the Association. Best pairing. Yeah, they were they were, they were one of the best pairings yeah. for sure. They were talking sure. in the in the after and show that, was... that uh, the conspiracy detective dude and Hopper might pair up. They think that would be a good pairing for season three, and I think that would be a good pairing as well. Oh, I don't think so. No. I want I want Steve to decide he wants to be a cop in Hawkins and him to pair with Hopper. Ooh, that's a good pairing. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So probably make Steve make it make yeah, it. Yeah, the, the, the crazy What? What'd you say? We, we They'll probably make again? us hate Steve again next season. I don't think so. Oh, because it, he was impossible. he was originally supposed to die in the first season and just be a bully antagonist and they love the actor so much. They rewrote the whole part to make. He's captured our hearts already. He's not going back now. <laughs> and he has to live. He's uh. This is really a prequel to Parks and Rec, and he's John Raffio's father. Yeah. Uh, so why why do you think Hopper and and that uh, crazy guy detective would be a good? Ah, uh, because uh, Hopper's like by the book badass, and that guy's like a crazy lunatic. Like even that opening scene when he's trying to tell him about yep. the conspiracy theories, and Hopper's just denying him. It would be like a different yeah, version I mean, of True was, Detective, was, where that crazy dude is Russ Cole and Hopper is uh, uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. What? Are, yeah. Well, I mean, it was comical, and I loved the, them together, but a the sustainable relationship which just could not. Well, if they're make like sense. trying. If they're Hopper trying to take leave down like something at, at a gas together. station. Like if they're like, you know, the police work and the journalistic work oh. actually needs to come together. You begrudgingly. Like just yes, yeah, so like not, not yeah, they'd be stuck together. I see. Yeah, that could work. I like that actor who played the conspiracy yeah. I've seen him in some shows before. What were time. um? Besides, yeah, the, he's been in a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I can't place where. And he's always yeah, the same he's guy. That weird. Yeah, he's always he's always a lunatic. But he plays it really well. Yeah. It's a good lunatic. It's like uh, Crispin Glover. He's always. An, an insane person is everything he is because I'm pretty sure he's insane in real life. I'm pretty sure this guy is uh, an actual conspiracy theorist because that's all he plays. Sure. I mean, you play what you can do. So besides uh, the Dustin-Steve pairing, what were your guys' favorite and least favorite pairings this season? Uh, least favorite? I really, uh, uh, going against popular opinion, I really did not like Eleven and Topper together. What? Not because I like I liked them together. I hated their storyline. Okay, like, that's I was fair. getting so angry. Oh yeah, see, I, I like them. I love them both. Two of the best characters in the show. But I was getting so angry. Like just let her out of her cage. She could fix this so quickly. And Hopper is making it worse. 
And then when he got into an argument, he was like, it was like classic, like a, a, they're going to take this clip one day and, and put it in like a psychologist class of like what not to do. And that's lose your shit, completely pull like the TV out of the wall, just get angry. When all you have to do is sit down and talk about your feelings. <laughs> yeah. So much could have been avoided. Yeah. I like them as a pairing, but like you said, I, I hated their whole storyline. Uh, but I, I feel like we kind of needed that because Eleven could have fixed everything by episode three if they weren't separated. Oh my god, yeah. It, it wouldn't have been a series if, if she was just free to do whatever. Yeah. And him and like... I like the, the, uh, the episode with why. the flashbacks where he was like earning her trust by leaving food and all that. That I teared up during that episode. Oh, nice. I, uh, 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 that, when he was like, there's only three rules, and then the three rules were basically like, be a fucking slave. He's like, and you can't, <laughs> you can't deal with these only three rules. Like, dude, Don't your leave. rules are incredibly hard. Just because there are three of them doesn't mean they're easy. It's like, don't ever leave the house, don't ever talk to anyone, and enjoy yourself. Impossible. <laughs> no, no, it was like, wait, oh, and windows closed yeah. at all times. Like, yeah. What the fuck could... So she was like, couldn't even see daylight. Yeah. It, was, it was like the hardest three rules anyone's ever had to live by. You want, you, I make you a prisoner, you can't even yeah. do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, My least favorite pairing, though, I gotta say is Lucas and Max, just because I was so disappointed by where they took Max. Yeah, I think you were expecting I, a lot out you, of Max. Yeah. Um, I don't, they brought her in. She was so like strong the first few episodes. I was excited to see what happened with her. And then I like that we learned more about Lucas. I hate that we had to deal with her as we were learning. About I mean, Max was the character that, that brings everything down to earth. Cause you need new blood in there to be like, wait, what, what happened? What's going on? So they can explain everything again. So the audience can get reminded as well. That's like her purpose is to be the person that's asked questions like, wait, why do you need to do this again? Because for audience members. So she's not like supposed to... No, fuck that. Just watch watch the five minute reminder before episode one. I mean, all shows have like a new character or some sort of device where they are the audience so you they can answer and ask questions. So that, that was her sole purpose. I know, purpose. But, but still, the rest of the characters were pretty damn good. Like, yeah, I had no I qualms with her. She, for what, she was a tool. I was very disappointed She, she was it. a tool to, to further this plot. Yeah, and she did very well in it. Yeah, the, the, I I agree. Right, I think in a, the, I think actor, in a lesser show she wouldn't have bothered me, but because everything is so well done in this, her just being a plot device bothered me. I think you're easily bothered. <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> it sounds like something um, a garbage person would say. You love that garbage person. Um, well, that's what you are. <laughs> I am not. So. Uh, how about, how about Billy, um, was him hating Lucas, that was racism, right? That was just blatant racism? I, no, I so, I think that he just fucking hated everyone in Hawkins, and he hated that his stepsister was making friends. No, he, I didn't he take, really I didn't singled take out the one black kid. Really the, singled the out the one kid, black kid. The one black kid was the only person up until he showed up to the house that he ever saw with his sister. He never saw his sister interact with any of the other kids. Yeah, but he made a point. He made a point All to right, be like, I mean, especially uh, that kid. And I, I thought they were hinting at like yeah. he was some sort of spy or secret agent of Hawkins spying on the kids, or he knew something about like all of this, and that's what they were getting at with yeah. how much he hated him. So maybe that was kind of just like a a, a red flag, like a fake thing, uh, to get us to think he had a bigger meaning. But if 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 yeah, not, I, it seems pretty racist. I thought their dad was going to yeah. end up being uh, Paul Reiser's character. Oh, that would have been good, yeah, actually. Worked. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Tie that in. Because because then he, they'd have to leave because he got fired, remember? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. now what the hell is Billy going to do? Billy, by the way, they just totally ne- ne- neglected Billy at the end. Like, what happened to him? He's literally, he's going to murder. Well, they showed him at the very end, and he was just kind of ignoring his sister when she was getting ready for the dance. So, Plotting he took, to he took the hint. 
Yeah, I don't know what he's gonna do. Mm-hmm. You know how all those eighties, those eighties villains are all the same. They 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 come back with an over the top gesture. <laughs> yeah. And he's gonna he's gonna steal Nancy's mom. You know what? I'm as much as I'm in love with Nancy, I'm okay with that though, because her dad does not know how to please that woman. He doesn't know how to not. live. I, mean, I love I love how that little clip where he's talking to the police that are in his house, and he's like, "Up, oh, we're all patriots here, <laughs> sir." Jesus, dude, such such a tool. <laughs> well, it was the '80s. Everyone trusted the government. Yep, we're all patriots. Yeah. Got anything else? All right, so uh, yeah, want to go into our rating? Yeah, let, let's. Are we got you want to do ratings or let's just give it a. I got a pairing. I got I got I got something to drink. Okay, with. Yeah, what, what's what are you uh, drinking with this? There's only one thing you can drink this drink to this, and that is a high C Ecto Cooler. Oh fuck, that's a good one. Yeah, it works. I know. It's the perfect one. Damn. I don't have one. Some campfire bug juice. <laughs> I I was going to have a stupid... Close enough? Good. Yeah. I, I got nothing. Um, yeah. It just stunned you with some greatness. Seriously, I'm more shook than last week when my the back of my chair fell off and I completely lost uh, what I was going to say. Fuck. All right. Well, let's just go with that. That's that's the best pairing we could yeah, possibly do I, ever. I, I endorse um, that pairing. And maybe eat some Dunkaroos gonna... with it. Because I felt like Dunkaroos were big in the late 80s. Sure, why not? Uh, and I'm going to give it five popcorns. I don't think we're going to contest that. No, I'm all no, in on five, five popcorns. I mean, no? we're, we're allowed to give five popcorns, right? Yeah. Okay, then yes, yeah. absolutely. Then yeah, five popcorns. If, po- if we could, I'd give it six popcorns. Well, we can't. But five it is. Nope. We can't. Nope. Yep, just going to be five. And uh, critically, I'm going to give it a strong, strong... Ninety-three percent. Cool. I was gonna say ninety-two point five. I'm gonna go ninety in A minus. What's that? Ninety-three. It is okay. It's fine. <laughs> he gave it an A minus. Yep. I'm gonna give Dave. I'm gonna give Dave uh, and his internet yep. an F for today. F. I don't know why my internet's so shitty today. Big time. So I hope everyone listening really enjoyed it's you guys talking. With me, like, not when whoever watches this, me just sitting here, frozen. Well, we got, your mic doesn't have internet connected, so we'll be good. That's true. You can just hear me continuously yeah. saying, hey, please keep talking. I'll hop in when I can. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's going to be great to edit that. that. So, okay. All right. Do you well, guys have any? You can go ahead and wrap this guy right, up. That, that wraps up our official review of Stranger Things 2. Do you guys have any other recommendations? I know we just recorded an episode a couple of days ago, so have you watched anything new in the last few days? I'm going to double down on something I think you recommended a couple weeks ago. Vice Principles has been so very good. Last episode, which is the penultimate episode, I believe, of the whole entire series, was hilarious. They they agree. <laughs> Holy shit. It was, it was hilarious. Uh, had some serious moments and moved like this whole who shot him plot line, like uh, um, suspense type thing. It was awesome. Okay, I, I haven't watched the latest episode yet, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I'm going to watch that right after we get done recording. It was so good. Uh, Ro- e- Lee yeah. Russell's character it is hilarious in it. I feel like he's hilarious every episode. He's, he's great. Every day, every time. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Shane? You got anything else? Yeah, I do. I got a few re- recommendations. Um, Jimmy, listen up. Okay, so what you want to do is you're gonna want to watch Iron Man. No. Then you're gonna want to watch <laughs> Iron Man Two. Nope. And then you're gonna you're gonna want to skip over Hulk. And then you're gonna gonna want to watch Captain America: First Class or fir- First Soldier. No, thank you. Then you're gonna want to watch all the way up through. I mean, especially don't forget Ant Man. No. Ant Man's very Guardians important. Guardians Galaxy. In. You should probably watch Ant Man twice. Very important. Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy, both of them, um, and the the Thor series, because this weekend Thor is coming back. We're gonna review it, and it's gonna be fucking amazing. And Jimmy, you are so lucky you get to be. Yeah, a part I haven't of this. seen. I haven't I can seen. See it, I haven't see it in your face, one dude. of those things you just said. You should you are, at least you read are. the Wikipedia. Nah. No, I think you should go in. You should go in cold. I want to see your your complete like 
unbiased uh, reaction to this magnificent film you're about to go. Hey, the Batman's one. Um, I think this this might be the one that this hooks you into all fourteen movies. Yeah, of the wait, Marvel series. What happens if you fall in love with this movie? Are you going to go back and just start watching all the Marvel movies? I think you are. No, I think you're going to be a huge Thor fan after this. Who, who, we'll see. I mean, I, I didn't watch any of the Batmans until the third one came out, and then I went to theaters and saw the trilogy in order, all three in one sitting, and I enjoyed all of those. So you didn't even go out of your way to see the. <laughs> wait, wait. You didn't even go. You didn't go out of your way to Sheen's see the Dark face Knight during that was amazing. What? You didn't go out of your way to see the Dark Knight like originally. You you had to see the the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, because all my friends went to see the three night showing, so I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna miss out on everyone's doing anything, everything together, big group activity." So I went and saw all three. Woo! Of things. Wow, that I, is uh, amazing that you you missed out on yeah, but on that cool. one. The jo- uh, Heath Ledger's Joker is is our our generation's magnificent performance. I agree. It was very, it was very, very good. Yeah, the first ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I mean, it's, there he is right there. I mean, is. The performance is really good, but and the movie it's good is as good as it. Well, it's the best one of the trilogy, so don't say the third one's better. No, I'm not. The third one's pretty bad. Um, But in comparison of the three, the second one is just like stupid. When you see all three together, like oh, in that first one, that dude was drugging people and he was gonna like murder the entire city and like ruin civilization as whole. And then the third one, they were literally going to, like, ruin civilization as a whole and murder everyone. And then the second one, it was just kind of like a, a, a mean clown that killed maybe, like, a hospital. You're, yeah. Yeah. The, it the was. Second one, yeah, the it was best a mean one fucking clown, Jimmy. Personal story. It was a mean fucking clown. It wasn't clown. a grand plan to you, kill you sit everyone. And watch all you three. take a back. more intimate story to kill Batman. When you sit and watch all three in one sitting, it's kind of just funny. Like, hey, the best movie was the least scary villain for like the world yeah all right sir i, I want to come through this fucking camera and slap you sir no no, no. He, he's still that? saying I mean, it's the best one i'm not saying that's you can't disagree i i i think I, well i i think it was I better think it's because not silly because i think sheen was about to say the same thing i'm saying which is i enjoyed the personal story me too i like that it was small and intimate it was 100 but it's not silly stop saying it's silly it's better and it's a good compared thing. The evil that was being presented in the second is silly compared to the was evil. Was the better evil. No, you're an idiot. You don't even listening to what I'm saying. I just want to kind of, kind of, I just. That's because you're a garbage just, person. I don't speak garbage and garbage ease. I'm going to say this as clearly and as, as eloquently as I can put it. All three movies revolve around the ending of Gotham as we know it. All right. No, the second one doesn't just really. because it doesn't have a nuclear bomb. Yes, it does. It it's it, it involves killing the people, not the city. There's a big difference. He tried to kill the two boatloads of people with this with the try to create anarchy, try to create chaos and have people fight yeah. themselves. It was a different bomb, okay? It was a metaphorical bomb, if you will. It was it was an amazing way to go about telling the story. Yeah, it was the best. Uh I think it was scarier. It was a scarier more it was a, it was more based in reality than just to happen to have a nuclear bomb r- rattling around. Yeah, I don't think you're getting what I said because everything that you just say, I agree with and think supports my my theory, my thought process. But I you may, keep I saying may have silly. Gotten triggered. Nothing Fine. about it was silly. You're wrong for using the word silly. Oh god. Yeah, you you said silly. I just uh, you triggered me pretty hard. I'm sorry. In in oh, yeah. comparison, she ends, a, she ends a triggered snowflake. In comparison. The first two are about like this network of criminals that have been passed down from years and years and they're professionally trained. And the second one is just a lone ranger. So in comparison, it's silly. That doesn't mean I'm saying it's worse. It's 10 times better, but it's funny to think like, Hey, maybe every villain should just be like a one villain and not this league of nation. Yeah. He's a villain to everyone. Yep, he's a, he's a rogue well, member. To be fair, he's the I anti- think the, the, the original plan for the third one was supposed to still be the Joker with some other villains, and he, he couldn't do it. Also, the twins killed him. All right, and peace. He was he was otherwise yeah. detained. Okay, um, I don't have another. That was talking Batman. Yeah, that was talking Batman. Uh, my recommendation is to I'm doubling down on Sheen's. Go watch all the Marvel movies because this weekend we're watching Thor Ragnarok. 
uh, Jimmy's second Yay. favorite movie behind Blade Runner 2049. What's Thor's power? He's the god of thunder. You don't know who Thor is? You never read he, Greek he's mythology? An act, I, he's an I know god. that, but like the, his power is thunder in the movies? Yeah, he's, he's god. He's the he's god of thunder. God. The, uh, the uh, hammer he wields, uh, it can summon the, the power of a thousand thunderbolts. Or whatever. So how's he ever lose? He hasn't. He doesn't. Okay. All right. Cool. If he had lost, he'd well, be see, dead. Now, it, and but see, he's up. He's he's go, he's going back up to his planet or his his world where he is still very very good fighter, but he is more on the equal playing field. Plus, we get gothic Kate Blanchett, who looks like a total smoke show in the trailer. So I'm all in on that. Yeah. Cool. That sounds nice. Everything else sounded real nerdy. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be nerdy. It's gonna be so it's nerdy. Be real, real dark and nerdy. I'm predicting Sunday's episode is gonna be a lot of Sheehan and I talking, and you just sitting there. <laughs> I'm gonna be real happy discussing this movie. All right, and that wraps up this episode of Six Pack Cinema. Like we keep saying, go see Thor Ragnarok this weekend because we'll be releasing an episode on that in just a few days. Mm-hmm.